Let's move. Let's keep moving. The color of this is black, white, green, etc. That's fine. We'll use that in a few minutes when we get to the new car ID. The principal driver shows the last name of each employee. How many warranty miles are there on this car? This is a 50,000 mile warranty and this car is just barely under the warranty. It still has 10,000 to go. Well the question is, is this covered under warranty? That's the formula we're going to do next. And so we'll do an if calculation. If if the miles are less than or equal to the warranty, then yes, it is covered. And so I'm just going to put the letter Y for covered. A comma, so if it's not covered, I'm going to write the word not covered. And then a quotation and a parenthesis. So now this says yes, it is covered. I get a Y. If I fill down, I will see a different value for each of these cars and some are covered and some are not covered under the warranty. The last item that we're going to fill in here is called the new car ID. Your boss gives you this requirement. He says take the original ID and I want you to squeeze in three more letters in between the manufacturer and this last three digit number and I want to, I want to know what color is the car. So once more this is a bad idea to try to squeeze as much information into one field but your boss said so so it's the truth let's do it how do we how do we how do we combine fields the formula you're looking for is called concatenate c o n and then you'll see concatenate shows up here if i click it double click it the format that you're supposed to to fill in is simply says text 1 text 2 etc so we're going to concatenate a bunch of fields. We want to put first of all continue using FD comma and then we want to have the manufacturer's year that comes as you can see that comes second in the list and then we want to continue on with the model and then a comma and now your boss said put in the color so we want to put in black. We're going to adjust that because he only wants the first three letters of the word. So we're going to delete this two squares. I want to know just the left three letters of black. So I have the left three of J2. So J2 comma three and a close parentheses and a comma. So we've just added the left three letters of black. And now what we need is the last three from here. So we use the formula right, click here, comma, three. Double close parentheses and press enter. So now we have the new car ID. One more change that we need to make is that this shows lowercase letters. Your boss didn't tell you, but he forgot to say all IDs in cars have uppercase letters only. Well, there's a nice formula to put in there. If I want to isolate these letters and change them to uppercase, the formula you're looking for is called upper. So I put a parenthesis around the part that I want to be uppercase and press enter. And now the new car ID shows BLA as black. I'm filling down and now we have a new car ID. Okay, so those are a lot of different database functions that you can use to manipulate text. The next item in our checklist of things that we're going to see on this assignment is called a pivot table. A pivot table allows you to summarize data. For instance, your boss might ask, of these drivers, who has the greatest amount of miles? There's some formulas you could work with, but here is one of them. It's called a pivot table. I'm going to insert, and under the insert command you see pivot table. It says, what's my range that I'm going to work with? And it automatically selects the entire spreadsheet. Click OK. 
A pivot table creates a new sheet. You down here, you notice this one said car inventory, and this sheet is called sheet one. I'm going to select the driver first. Put a check mark next to him. And then I want to know about the miles on the car, so I click on miles. Automatically, the computer assumes that I want the sum of the miles and the driver. And so now we have a chart that shows each driver and the number of miles that he created. Well, you could also put in a chart and create a list of all the drivers and their miles. And so Smith jumps out right away from our graph. Whoever Smith is, he's driving a lot. Let's go back to our car inventory and see what Smith is up to. Smith. What kind of car does he have? Well, he has a Ford Mustang. No wonder he's driving so much. I would drive a lot, too, if somebody gave me a Mustang. And so Smith shows his miles as the most of anyone in the series. Another type of graph that we haven't worked with yet is called a scatter chart. A scatter chart allows you to put a specific data points on a graph. So I'm going to select here the age of the car and the miles. Just these two columns. I'll click on their column headers and select the entire column. I'm going to insert a new chart. And the chart that I'm looking for here has a bunch of points on it. It's called a scatter chart. And as soon as you select it, you can see what it's doing. It's pointing each of these graphs. Each one of these dots on the graph shows that the years across the bottom are showing from zero years up to, it looks like about 18 is the oldest car. And then the number of miles each car has. And so it almost looks like a straight line. Well, there is something called a trend line that we're looking for. So I'm clicking on the plus sign up here. And I'm selecting trend line. And now there's a dotted line that goes up and down through the middle of these dots. We could probably make these... Um, access titles a little bit easier to read so I'm going to select those as well deleting the word access title and putting in the word miles miles driven and then down here on this axis I'm changing this to the age of the car age of the car and then in parentheses years and so let's park this off to the side and slide over. So now we have a chart that shows the miles in our inventory. Some of these are outliers. Some of these are right on the line. One more way that we could do some analysis is we could find out which cars are being driven more than others. So let's select column I. Now let's go to conditional formatting. Let's try out something called the color scales. Let's pick one of these color scales. There's blue and green and red. Doesn't matter which one you choose, but when you pick one, you'll see that some colors are highlighted in darker and a lighter colors. These show you the extremes. So like this 35,000 shows up as one of the highest. Let's sort this spreadsheet based on the miles driven per year. The first thing we have to do is select just the range where our data is stored. We're going to ignore these lookup tables at the bottom. So I'm highlighting all the way down to row 53. And then going to the data tab and choosing sort. Let's sort by column. What column is this? Column I. And let's go from the largest to the smallest and click OK. And so you can see that this car here, this particular car, has 35,000 miles per year on average. It only has six months, and the guy has already driven at 17,000 miles. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll see that the minimum dri driven car is this Ford Mustang here. It's eight years old, and it has 40,000 miles on it. The last item I'd like to do is to create a report. So let's go back to Microsoft Word and we're going to copy and paste a few of these items from our spreadsheet. The title of our report is going to have our name on it. 
Next I'm simply going to put the top drivers by miles and then I'm going to go back to Excel, go back to my sheet, copy this graph. So I'm going to right click it, choose copy, and you can see you can go back to Word, right click it, and choose pastes. And so these two programs integrate with each other. Press enter a couple times and I'm going to show the next is the scatter chart for the car inventory. So it says the scatter chart for the car inventory miles on each car. Now I'm going back to Excel and I'm going to copy this graph here that has the scatter chart. So right click on it, choose copy, go back to Word, right click and choose paste. And so I have two charts that came from my graph. Let's print these and call that our final assignment. One more thing, when you go to save a document in Excel that was created using a text file, you can see up here it says car inventory text. When you go to save that, you're going to get an error message. It says you're still in the tab formatted text. Do you want to keep using that format? You should say no. We want to save this using a new format. Instead of tab delimited or text delimited, we're just going to choose Excel workbook. And now all those pretty blue and uh, all the formula and all the other things that were created in the charts, they will stay with your spreadsheet. A regular tab or text delimited file cannot possibly save these items. Okay, in Microsoft Word, let's go file and print and we'll call our document done. Thank <laughs> you.